All right, we're loading up. But while we're doing this, hey y'all, I'm Dave Fuxa. Welcome to Star Trek's Frontiers. And music is kicking in just a moment as it loads up here. And there we go, epic music. All right, so um, before I sort of like jump into the series, I want to basically know a couple things that you know are worth noting. First and foremost, I'm actually playing this on an emulator. Um, this game here. This is actually like a mobile version of this game. There is a PC version, but you know I haven't seen a whole lot of content for this game, um, the mobile version of this game, and well, I figured I'd change that. I'll also note that um, the emulator I'm basically using is called Nox, and part of the reason for this let's play is to basically test out Nox and see like how it works. So, you know, if I perhaps like you know find it's like you know very workable, maybe I'll see like you know see more like you know let's play series for this game, or you know from Nox basically being used for me to produce let's plays for you guys. All right, now now that that's basically out of the way, there's a couple other things basically you should know about like you know what to expect from the series, I guess. So let's get into that. First. I have actually played this, like, you know, game a little bit on the emulator to see, like, how it worked. And I basically took the time, basically, to, you know, get some unlocks. So, I basically have, like, all the stuff that, you know, is basically, like, you know, unlockable. Um, that, like, you know, basically isn't, like, story, um, you know, I can't really get through, like, the story missions. Like, a lot of stuff is basically story, story related. I haven't yet really touched, so, we haven't, like, you know, got any of this stuff up here. But, we'll get that as we, like, you know, get to, like, the, um, story missions and stuff. Second... There won't be any gameplay for this uh, this game until like about the third episode, I think. Although there's basically a character creation process in this game, and a lot of like sort of set up for a new, like a new run, so I want basically sort of like jump into that. And well, it'll basically I think take about two episodes basically get through it. So you know, bear with me while I basically get through it. Um, if you want to basically see the gameplay, maybe just jump to uh, episode three. Um, I hopefully won't skip too much. That might be important. Like you know, you're gonna see like you know, um, in episode one it's like make a template, uh, explain some like, attributes and stuff for it. Episode 2 will basically be me, like, you know, managing my crew, like, you know, assign talents, look at their, like, traits and stuff like that, maybe explain a few things. Episode 3, will, that will be, like, where the gameplay starts. Alright, so, now that that's out of the way, let's just start a new game. Alright, so, when you basically, like, you know, start this game, you have to basically, like, create a template for yourself, or pick one of the, exist uh, the, exist blah, the existing ones. Um, at the start, like, when you basically, like, play this game for the first time, the Corsair, Nomad, Tracker, and Traveler will be basically available for you guys to um, play. And these are basically um, templates that the developers made, and they work okay. Um, they basically feature like, you know, C-class ships, or D-class ships, or B-class ships, rather. And they're they're basically to the point for what they're basically, you know, supposed to do. Um, I'll note that I actually have already gone through and made like a few templates for myself, but we'll still make like a new template so you can basically see the process and like, you know, how basically it works. By the way, we'll play, probably play playing with this guy here, by the way, Xenobane. So, I'll show that off in a little bit. And, you know, explain why, why I'm picking this build here. Maybe explain the other ones, too. Alright, so, new template. Now, I'll note basically that everything here is ranked from A to E. And, these are basically, like, you know, different items that will basically, like, you know, influence, like, your start here. And, depending on, like, you know, how they basically are ranked, you'll basically have, like, you know, better options for, like, you know, certain things that are high, ranked higher. And, like, you know, weaker options for... Weaker options when stuff is basically when rank, rank lower. So, for example, like skills being at like you know E here, I'll have like no skills basically like you know to like you know use for my character at the start. He only have like skills basically attained for like his um experience. Whereas if I basically up this to like you know rank A, I'll basically have like you know twenty three skills I can assign, and they don't have to be like you know connected to like you know my um my experience either. They could be whatever I want to be. Now thinking about it here. Um, let's just, like, serve messages a little bit. So, I'll note by the way, like, you know, you can, like, assign it however you want to. Um, I usually, for, like, my characters, I like to put, like, you know, skills and aptitudes pretty high up. And then, like, I have, like, you know, my ship at maybe, like, C or B. Experience I always have, like, a, you know, very low in context at D, I guess. But let's see here. Hmm. I'll note that if, like, um, I'm looking for a ship here, there's lots of ships you can basically pick here. And some are like, you know, pretty powerful, some are not so powerful. 
maybe I'll pick the Fidel's cutter here, just an example. So, all of that when you basically like, pick ships, by the way, they have to basically be like, you know, within a budget that you basically have. That's basically dependent on like, you know, where you basically have it set up. So, um, if I want to get this B-class ship, which is the Fidel's cutter, it has to be up here, like, you know, at the B tier, or at the A tier. And I'll look by if it's not the A tier, I'll actually have some extra money basically to spend for, like, say, upgrading ship, which would be nice. Though, hmm. Let's see if ships at uh, C tier, I think. And while I'm at, I'll just explain a few things about these ships here. So, you have quite, quite a pick of ships to basically, basically play here. And you have, like, some weak ships, like, you know, that can, like, you know, do some things for you if you need to. Stronger ships that basically, like, you know, um, have, like, some specialties for them, and then, of course, giant freighters with lots of cargo space. Um, I'll note that basically picking a ship here, uh, the Fiddles Cutter. This is not a bad ship for, like, a merchant to basically play, and I'll note, by the way, I'm actually thinking about playing, like, you know, as a merchant here. So, just select that right now. But, here's the thing. Um, when you're basically, like, you know, selecting your ships here, you have to basically sort, of, you sort of, like, you know, think, what's going to be, like, a good game, um, ship to basically, like, you know, get you for the early game? And, I'll look by the way as well, um, you can actually, like, buy new ships, and it's very possible, like, you know, I could start, like, a drawer and, like, you know, buy, like, the, the Sword of Battle Cruiser, so to speak. Which is, like, the most expensive ship, ship in the game. But playing it as a drawer here, it doesn't have a whole lot of cargo, so I won't be able to, like, you know, benefit from, like, you know, the, uh, the merchant's, like, abilities to, like, you know, sell good stuff early on. Whereas, if I play, like, say, like, the, uh, Galtic Freer here, or even, like, you know, the, uh, Fiddles Cutter, which I had, well, this has some cargo space to, like, do stuff with. So, I think for our purposes, let's say I'll pick up the Galtic Freighter, just like the best merchant type of ship. Um, it's basically one of the things I have to unlock, but, you know, I have it, you know, available because I've unlocked it. This is a good ship because it basically has the 75 cargo, and it's fairly fuel, ship, fuel efficient for what it offers, so we'll take it. And, I'm not by the way, like, you know, it doesn't really explain a whole lot, basically, what's going on here, but, um, each of these ships, basically, they have, like, you know, a fuel count that, you know, they have for, like, you know, traveling around stars. Um, they'll have, like, you know, a certain amount of, like, crew and officers they basically have. Um, if they have it, you know, mass craft will be a thing as well. That's basically for, like, little, like, firecraft, like, you know, the ships can launch. These are all basically capital ships, by the way, um, if you want to, you know, know the, the little bits about them. And yeah, most of these ships, um, uh, ex um, excluding, like, the Scout Cutter and I think the, uh, Long Bolt. Oh, the Long Bolt, too. Well, most of these ships basically can have, like, you know, firecraft if you want to, which is interesting. But yeah, let's just go with the Galtic Freighter here, and... We'll select that as my ship. So, now that I basically selected this as my ship, let's just lock it in here. And I hope if you lock this in here, um, you can, like, you know, spot stuff around it, so, you know, if you decide, like, you know, this is definitely where it's gonna be, you can, like, you know, adjust the other stuff as you, as you want to. And, let's just see here. I'll note that basically with the ship, um, ship, by the way, you probably should never, like, you know, start with, like, a D or E tier, unless you're very experienced at the game. Start with, like, you know, C or B or probably, is probably a better idea, because, um, even though you can, like, buy a better ship, it's a, it's very much uh, something that, like, you know, the early game can really kill you if you're not really, like, you know, um, good at the game, I guess per se, or if you, like, you know, play, uh, if you have, like, just bad luck, because it's very possible that RNG can, like, kill you, you know, as well. But, whatever, let's have our ship there, you know, um, C tier. And I said it was going to be a merchant, so let's just play a couple things about the, um, experience thing, thing here. So, on the level of experience here, this basically is, like, you know, class you're going to basically be playing with, and I selected the merchant. On the basically when you like you like know, select your captain, each of like the classes basically have their own captain traits. This is basically what you're selecting when you basically select experience. So um, if it basically plays the bounty hunter, we'll have access to like the bonus and born hunter traits. Um, if I play for the merchant here, I can like you know play with like the like you know exacting and lawful traits. And on the as as like you know um, your like um, experience goes up, you know also basically ups like your like you know sign like experience like um, captain level as well. So if I start like you know experience at, like B. We'll have access to, like, you know, a level 4 captain, level 2 officers. We'll also have level 2 crew, which is nice as well. Um, I'm not going to drop it down here. You basically have, like, level 1 crew, level 2 officers, level 2 captain. And, of course, down here at uh, 0, everything's level 1. Which is actually fine. I'm actually not, um, you know... The thing about this game is I don't find, like, you know, character levels really matter all that much. Um, you, get, like, you can get a nice, nice little start at the beginning if, like, you know, your, your crew is basically trained to, like, you know, be able to do stuff, but... It doesn't really hurt you to start, like, you know, with, like, little ones all over the place, so... That's fine. Um, but I'll probably know something as well. It's not really important, by the way, like, you know, what class you basically pick for, like, your starting, like, you know, tempest and stuff. Because, for example, I could pick, like, the Bounty Hunter, and... 
I got like no intention based to play about her. I'm basically like you know pick up for like the relentless and board hunter traits, and you actually like, um, cr um, class change basically or cross class like you know um, train your guys. So I got like a level one bounty hunter by starting out, and I could like you know basically start training and be like you know um, a commander. So a bounty hunter commander with like you know level one bounty hunter and like you know whatever commander I basically level up to be. Um, and by the way, you don't get, like, these, like, traits where you, like, um, cross-change, so, like, you know, it's basically, like, you know, what you pick them to be, so, if you pick a bounty hunter for, like, this, like, trait, you're basically train, you know, you're basically picking for traits, is a thing. But yeah, let's just, like, merchant here, and I'll lock this down at E. And, let's just sort of, like, um, get into, like, the, the really important stuff. So, I'll note that with skills and attributes up here, these are really important to basically have high, because they actually will stick with you through the rest of the game. Basically, with, like, you know, skills... These are like skills that you're gonna start out with, and they're basically separate from like your um, your experience. So I can like you know be like you know merchant here, which basically starts with like negotiate and command tactics, and he'll actually level up and like get improvements in negotiate command tactics as he like you know levels up. But if I want to, I can like you know go over here to skills, and I can like you know say up explore to like ten, and that basically means that like you know if I go to a plant, I can like touch down and get better at exploring more for it. Or if I want to, I could like you know say up my command for a little bit, and my, um, my merchant does have command as, like, you know, one of his thing here, but getting more command just means, like, he's gonna have more command, like, you know, in his playthrough, so he'll have, like, 10 command plus whatever he gets from leveling up. So, you basically, like, you know, have lots of fun with this. Uh, I'm looking for skills, by the way, as you can see, it's basically split into crew combat and, uh, personnel, and, you know, it's fairly straightforward what they basically do. Crew combat is, it interacts with, like, you know, what we do in crew combat, so, um, if you're gonna use pistols, basically you can like up this, like you know, have better chance, like you know, hit with pistols. Uh, if you want to use blades instead, you can use blades, and this basically also improves like your defensive blades as well because you know they're like a personal defense weapon. Um, other stuff here, by the way, stealth is like something that is connected to um, missions and stuff like that. So it's like a, a special um, stat that's you know it doesn't really belong in personnel. It's like you know this is something that's just uh, you know separate from both of them, but it need to be put put somewhere. I'll probably know something else as well. Well, a lot of stuff is basically, like, you know, it says what it does in a tin for the most part. Um, command here doesn't really say anything about it, but um, some of these, like, you know, these skills will have, like, you know, hidden properties to them. And command will actually, like, you know, affect, like, your ship combat, for example. Um, specifically, in ship combat, it'll basically help you defend against, like, shots. So it's a good thing to have for, like, new players, I think, to have, like, you know, maximum command. And while I'm at it, let's also get, perhaps, a little bit of negotiate. So... This will basically help with, like, you know, my ability to do stuff, like, you know, my merchant's, like, you know, ability to, like, you know, um... He'll be able to, like, complete his missions, like, you know, do a lot of training and stuff better, because the negotiation will be really high. So, basically, he'll, like, be more effective at it. And I have, like, three more skill bonuses to basically throw around, so... Let's just throw free into Explore, because... Why not? And, yeah, I'll note, by the way, that, like, you know, the UI for, like, the mobile version of this game, it... You know, it's it's okay. It does what it needs to, I guess. But um, being you know, like a UI for like you know mobile device, it has to like blow up everything, which means it blows up on, on top of other stuff. And you'll see like some of, like the, uh, the hidden problems of that because there's like a couple things in this game, like you know, that blow up. Don't they don't blow up very well? It's unfortunate, but you know, oh well. I'll point them out as you go along. But you know, just to throw it out there as a thing. And you know, that's our skills. Now attributes are like you know another thing that you can also basically like, you know. Um, they're very important because they basically stick with you throughout the game. Like, with, uh, unlike, uh, um, with skills, by the way, attributes are basically something that, like, you know, um, they can be influenced by traits and stuff, but for the most part, the only thing that's going to basically increase, like, you know, attributes is, like, you know, what you basically set them to in the start of the game. And they don't, like, level up, like, yes, yeah, so, like, you know, your character increases in experience. Traits will basically, like, you know, bring them up and down, but, you know, that's, like, you know, traits, and I'll basically get to that when we get to, like, you know, next, the next episode. So... They're pretty important, and much like, you know, with, like, um, skills, they're basically, like, you know, straightforward what they do. Strength basically increases, like, your melee attacks and, like, your um, maximum XP. Quick dance is basically, like, your ability to, like, you know, go first or hit, like, you know, flexible, like, you know, finesse weapons. And, like, you know, it's also your dodge. 4 two is basically, like, your ability to, like, absorb damage. And then we get down to mental attributes. These are basically basic charisma, wisdom, resilience. Charisma is important for, like, you know, social interactions, so for merchant, all the way up to 3. Um, wisdom is basically important for, like, you know, crew new co um, combat initiatives, so it also ties into, like, you know, your combat st stats, but it also factors into other stuff as well. Um, basically, like, you know, as you can see, spying, exploring, so... 
Maybe I'll boot us up the Fury. I got like, you know, a few ships here left. Then you got Resilience down here. I'll note that Resilience is a very like interesting stat because um here's the thing about this game by the way. It can be played with permadeath. And I am gonna play a like, permadeath run by the way. And resilience is basically tied to like, you know, your chance to basically avoid fail blows. And a fail blow is basically whenever your character drops to like zero HP. And it can happen. And it sucks when it does. I think though we're just put like you know our six points in four two because that obviously boosts up our chance to survive hits, which basically means that you know I want to worry about like you know dying, and on the way but basically by the way like from merchant here we're we're basically playing a build that just you know it sort of emphasizes like you know being on like the ship more like you know being like out in the field like you know doing crew combat so that's basically like I'm building this guy here, and on the way you can like build like these guys however you want to so for example you could have like a combat oriented merchant like you know. Um, you could, like, go to, like, the Pick the Merchant here, basically pick up for, like, a trace, like, you know, this is a really nice trait to have Lawful, because it basically reduces the hostility of law-binding ships, and they can be a real pain le later on, the law-binding ships. But, here's the thing, you can cross-change, as I said, to, like, other classes, and you can, like, pick a Merchant, and then pick up another class that goes after it, to, like, do stuff with. And then you have Contacts. Now, I know if contacts down here, these are like the people you're going to meet in game that like, you know, can offer you like, you know, special like privileges and stuff. And they're basically how you get your missions, how you like, you know, improving uh, equipment most of the time. Uh, source of basically buy your intel and like, you know, um, offer like, you know, you ability to like do stuff like, you know, get edicts. Uh, one of the guys down here, like say a military camera, he'll offer you a faction rank that's important for like, you know, being able to buy new ships as well as to like, you know, substitute certain missions. You have the princess who basically offer you like trade permits. Um, you can trade a lot of stuff in this game, but without the prince offering like a better permit, you'll you know probably be suffering because you won't be able to sell the good stuff, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, let's say I'm going to go for like say a merchant here though, because that basically offers me like you know trade permits as well as like you know rare trade goods, place to buy intel, and <clears throat> let's say I also pick up say a smuggler, and that basically also offers me like you know stuff. We also have to me like the option to go to a black market, which is you know way to another way to sell sell my like you know goods later on. And you know that's like a basic way of like setting up your guys. And then also really left is like go over here, make like your name for it. So we'll say um, example merchant. Boom. Now on the way that um, there's one more thing to note. You see these check marks over here. I'm not by the way if you like, you know, movies like, you know, um if you like get access for this stuff, it will actually like note that you can't actually make the te template because it basically says it's invalid and you can't save it. So when you're basically like making your guys, um these like all three is check marks, so you know they can actually work. And let's say I just go over here. Boop, boop. All ready and good again. And when you're basically you know have this all ready, you can like save it. And there we go, we have an example of Merchant, and, you know, we can save it, and then, you know, it's ready to go. Probably not going to play with that, by the way, and if I want to, I'm going to delete it, so... You delete it, you know, I sure want to print delete this template, this cannot be undone. Yes, done. And then we have, this, you know, this is the stuff we have, you know, existing already. Alright, now, note by the way that, you know, before, like, you know, starting out here, I made my own templates, basically, for, like, you know, possible Let's Plays, you know, starting with this guy here. Um, I'll note, basically, that the Xenon Hunter is probably my favorite class, so we're going to be starting with him. And I do have like our stuff here as well, but you know, um, the reason I started with him, by the way, is I was able to sort of like think of a build with, a build with this guy that you know focuses on stuff that doesn't require un unlock. So basically, this guy here. Let's say you guys want to play your own game, like um, your own game, own run of this game, so to speak. Here's a template you can basically use that um, I basically made, and it's basically available right from the start because they don't have to have that anything unlocked. And I'll note by the way, like you know, in this game, there are the unlocks are basically like you know tied to achievements and. Um, you basically have to, like, do certain things, basically, to get these unlocked, so, for like, example, there's, there's, um, Galtic Freighter, that basically was, like, you know, I was going to go for the merchant. This basically requires that you can complete 10 missions on Diffily Normal, before you can actually get it, and you have to do it within two years, so, yeah. Basically, like, the unlocks are, like, you know, the touch achievements, and some of them can be difficult, but most of them are pretty easy. Um, this one's pretty difficult, difficult to do, because it requires you to do 25 missions on failing. That's hard. Even if there is no time limit. Hopefully we'll get into my run, we'll see. Alright, so, that's basically character creation, but we're not done yet. After you've basically done your character creation, you basically go into like these, um, like, you know, this, like, uh, world generation, I guess we'll say. 
And it's basically where, like, you, like, choose, like, your character's face and, like, you know, there's gender. So there's, like, you know, females and males. Um, you can choose your uniform, so... Let's say for a Xeno Hunter, I want to have, like, you know, combat armor, so we can have that. Uh, I go for something else, though, so... Let's say I'm, like, you know... You know, we're a Space for Force, like, Marine. So there's some, like, Space Force combat armor. Though, I think we'll stick with, like, the, the you know, the green one, because, you know... We're on the ground, right? We all want to have, like, you know, something that sort of blends into the environment. And not, you know, like, something we want to fight, like, the aliens with. And I'm not boy about, like, you know, um, this guy here he basically picked. Let's just uh, let's go into it here. So, I'm looking at the Xeno Hunter. It's basically, you know, my favorite class because it's very, very, very good against a certain, like, enemy in this game called Xeno. Um, you don't really see them until later on, but you can find them early on. And when you do, they really suck because they can, like, quickly, like, end your, like, run or your kill a bunch of your guys really fast if, like, you don't have a captain in play. Um, this um, Bill's, um, guy I'm going to go with, the idea for this is that, like, you know, we'll obviously have something that, like, you know, um, can survive, like, an early Xeno attack. And this will do it quite well, I think. It's also got a pretty good, like, you know, traits here with, like, you know, Inner Flame, which basically has a lot of, like, you know, good stuff going, like, you know, armor and morale. And it also has, like, you know, the ability to get extra rep against Xeno ships, which is, you know, later down the line, but, you know, it's there too. And, on the, what, 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 um, by the way, as well, the Frontier Liar is really good for, like, you know, this character as well, because um, the Frontier Liar features a lot of, like, you know, equipment that's basically good for landing on planets. And that's something you're going to basically do in this game. I'll get into that when we get to it, but... It basically has, like, stuff that, like, you know, improves, like, your ability to, like, you know, keep your guys alive. And, you know, it also has some cargo space to, like, take the loot as well. Um, I also picked up contacts for, like, you know, the Retired Explorer and the tar Starport mechanic. These contacts here are good for, like, you know, my run as well, because this guy can, like, get me, like, missions that, you know, could be, like, to land on the world and do stuff like that. Like, you know, explore it. And we also get Exoscouts, which is nice to recruit. He also offers trade person, which is nice, because, you know, I can, like, get those er early from him. And, like, you know, be able to do more better trading. And Salvage Supers are also nice to have as well. And there's the Starport Mechanic. This guy's good because he offers mechanic recruits, introductions. He'll buy my intel and also offers discount kind of fuel. So, early on, this guy will be, like, good because, um... Well, basically for the mechanic recruits, I can get, like, better guys from him to, like, you know, serve my own ship. And the introduction is really nice as well because, um... I'll be able to, like, you know, possibly, like, meet new people. And I can meet whoever else, you know, these guys know. And I'll play with, like, the contacts, like, you know, there's a lot of people, there's, like, a lot of people you can meet in this game, and, you know, um, you have, like, you know, combat-oriented guys, like, you know, can, like, you know, help with, like, you know, better, like, military-type of recruits, or, like, you know, missions, like, you know, to, like, you know, do map bounty hunting, for example. And, you know, it's a big run of mill, so to speak, with who you can basically pick. But, yeah, here's my build for the most part. We basically have, like, you know, um, it's fairly combat-oriented, this guy, because he has, like, you know, fairly good combat stats, as opposed to, like, you know, the, um, Template basically made with like you know the um, high charisma and wisdom. Um, I'm not done with Xeno Hunters by the way. Their health isn't so important, so I basically have like you know fairly low like you know um, combat stats of like you know 22 fortitude. They also have high strength because like you know um, they use like heavy weaponry and strength basically is basically like corresponding to like you know heavy weaponry like that. I'll get into that a little bit later when we actually jump into like in the second episode. I think explaining like you know why the stats sort of matter. Um, he has ten rifles, five evasion, and you know. Let's just jump into it, and I'll get into like the world creation part. All right, so um, we'll get our combat armor on. Let's select the face here, and who do I want to be? And I'll look by uh, just going through the faces here. You can see there's like a nice blend of like the different you know ethnicities in this game. So you got like you know um, black people, and you got like you know um, Eastern European people, Norse people. Um, Chinese or like you know Asian people, Indian. I like this face by the way, but you know we'll skip it because um, I want something else. So that's basically all the faces. So um, you know what? Let's just go for someone who's bald because you know we're gonna go with someone who's bald and badass. All right. So there's my like you know character made. Um, we go down here and change our captain name, so we can be, like, you know, Captain Fuxa. So, boom, there's Captain Fuxa, ready to go. Now, although by the way, if you basically like, play this game before, there'll be, like, a second option to skip the intro. Um, we're going to see the intro anyways, because it's going to be like, the first Let's Play, but, you know, um, that's the stuff I note. There's going to be, like, you know, another button, you know, sometimes on this character creation screen. 
Um, anyways, let's go through this stuff here. So, although there is a default map, and, you know, there's also, like, the ability to, like, you know, make your own maps. I have, like, one right here called Xenobane. But let's get into this process here. So, you can basically create a new map, and from these, like, maps, you can, like, you know, change, like, how you want your galaxy to be set up. So, you have, like, a, lots of cross to explore, which basically means you have, like, a huge galaxy to explore, with lots of, like, you know, systems and such. Or you can, like, you know, make it very small as well. So, you can have, like, you know, small quadrants, and, like, you know, it'll be very, very, like, small and, like, compact, just like a thing. Um, you can, like, boost, boost up the density if you want as well. Basically, it means, like, everything's very interlinked, and, like, you know, everything's very close to the round, so... We'll just call this the, um, Choke. Yes, we'll call this the Choke Galaxy. So, there we go. There's the Choke Galaxy. And if I basically save this, um, you'll basically see, like, you know, that's selected. Now, a little bit of, like, the faction here, this is basically based on the map, so, um, you basically, like, you know, uh, go through here, you'll see, like, you know, this is, like, gonna have, like, you know, it controls one, uh, uh quadrant, it basically has 15 landing zones, um, it goes to, like, the number one here, this guy has, like, you know, one quadrant, 16 landing zones. This guy here has, like, you know, one quadrant, 15 landing zones. This guy has two. And, this would be, like, you know, this corresponds to, like, you know, what is, like, you know, your, um, your galaxy size. Now, I'll probably have a zoom in here. This basically is, a, you know, a four quadrant map of, like, standard density, so, we'll select that. And, going back here, you'll see, like, you know, these guys now have, like, you know, a lot of change here. So, this guy's now have got three quadrants and four six lane zones. Uh, this guy over here. He has three quadrants and four lane zones. And I'll note as well, by the way, that, you know, sometimes you guys can really luck out. In this case, you got, this guy's got six quadrants and 60 lane zones, so that's a really big house. And let's see here as well. So four, 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 three. There's another small one, the Javik guy. There's a really big one, so seven quadrants. Wow, that's big. Though I have to say, he's only got 59 lane zones, which is kind of odd. Um... Well, I guess not really. Now, I'll not worry that, like, you know, um, you can play the default map, and that basically sets the map to be the same every single time, and it's a pretty good map. But, I wanted to basically jump into, like, the, like, you know, the map game thing here, because, um, I like to play Rolex, by the way, so, you know, I like my Ramus, so to speak, and, you know, this makes it a Ram map for us to basically play. So, we're gonna play this map here, and let's just go through the factions here. Now, I'll note that with the factions here, there's, like, you know, different, like, you know, powers basically vying for a power in this universe. And they basically all have, like, you know, different things going for them, so... Here's, like, the Vulta Syndicate. These guys basically are, like, you know, a powerful syndicate. That looks just, like, free here. And... They basically, like, you know, they value wealth, expertise, manufacturing, finance. Um, each of these, like, factions have, like, different bonuses, by the way. So, this guy here, as you can see, has, like, a bonus in economy and starport. And with the latest medical tech available, they have, like, you know, um... Reduced cost of healing at their, at their places, which is nice. And... I'll look at it, by the way, that, like, you know... How you basically play the game, obviously, like, you know, it'll depend, like, you know, what you basically want from these guys, for example. So, if I go with Kader, for example, these guys are, like, a military faction, so they basically will have, like, you know, um, bonuses for, like, guys who basically have, like, a rank, which is nice. Um, something else, um, th something else to know as well, it doesn't really matter what, like, faction you basically pick, because you guys, you basically, like, you know, start with, like, say, Clan Javik here, for example, and they start interacting with the Voltos, for example, right after, and, like, you know, make friends with them, and, like, you know, get their bonuses that way. So, these bonuses are like, you know, it doesn't really matter too much, it just, you know, what, what you're basically selecting here with like, you know, your faction here. You're basically going to get the uh, faction with starting loyalty, and that could be very good for them to basically get, get something like down the road for them. So, for example, if I pick the Chaos Syndicate, these guys basically have like a bunch of ships that are very, very nice to like, you know, buy. And some of them are basically faction specific to them, so you can't buy them from anyone else but them. So, if I basically pick them and like, you know, um, start like doing stuff for them, I can like get access to, to like the nice ships. And, you know, it'll be a lot easier basically to do it if I'm a part of a faction, rather like, say, start with a clan Javit, and, like, go, and get making friends with him, and I'll build an influence that way. So, that's just something I note, by the way, evidence about this. Anyhow, to quickly go through this stuff, um, the vault is here basically has, like, you know, economic bonuses of, 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 you know, plus four economy, and plus two starport. And their worlds are basically really good if you want to basically sell stuff to them, or, like, buy, like, you know, goods to basically sell elsewhere. The healing's pretty nice to basically have because that's basically good if you want to basically, you know, have like a combat order type of thing, and that might be good for me because I'm probably going to do com c combat quite a bit, but, you know, it's not too important. Um, Kira Syndicate, as I said, basically they have like, you know, uh, bonuses if, they, if the captains with the whole faction rank, and that'll be something I may want to do at some point, have lots of faction rank, but um, I don't usually do it really early on, so it won't be so, uh, like, until later down the road, and at that point I'll probably gain influence from if, you know, if I want to anyways. I, as I did say, they do have, like, you know, a good military ship, and 
They're also very good to like upgrade your ships as well because like you know they have plus four military, and this will play a big part in upgrading your ship because starports with like you know high military at them will basically let you uh, um, get like better um, upgrades for them as well. So this is something we'll point out with these guys. These guys are great for uh, I have like a really kid out military ship basically. Um, Syndicate right chart. These guys are like you know your diplomatic faction. So I'll not play with these factions. They're very, pretty much cookie, cookie cutter for the most part and what they basically do. Um, this guy here basically gives a bonus of spice and government, and he's basically plush of like you know comforts and stuff like that. They're pretty good to go to since they get right chart, especially since they have like so many quadrants you know under control. But um, they're, uh, I'll note that these guys are kind of weak in like you know the special rules because they basically like you know just offer you like better like morale for these guys, but, like you know you spice them up. But I mean, it's nothing really great with them, I guess. House Fulin. <clears throat> I'm not that House Fulin is probably one of my favorite houses to play in this game because they offer a really good special rule where basically they um, will offer discounts or repairs and at least like you know do it in less time, which is very nice as well. So these guys basically are good if you know want to play like you know um, uh, a type of run where like you're going to do a lot of ship combat, kind of like the Baltus here, except like they're actually good for like you're repairing your ship. So you know they're they're probably even better than like the Baltus. So um, the thing about them is that like you know. Unlike the Voltas, I don't think they have, like, you know, as great, like, faction perks, we'll say. Like, each of you, like, you know, factions will have, like, you know, different ships you can buy, and, like, you know, different, like, upgrades for the chefs. I don't think House Fulins has the greatest stuff, though, so... You basically just gain this if you, like, you go with them, which is not bad. It can help you uh, out with pretty well, but... We won't worry about it, don't think, too much. Um, Clan Javit, by the way, I'll note, is very interesting, because... They're never far from the Aries, so basically they have, like, a, probably like, the weakest, like, special rule here. Basically, just offer, like, you know, cheaper discounts their fuel. But... The thing about these guys is they have such powerful economies for the world. So mining, refinery, and industrial zones all have powerful economies, which basically means that they, you know you can like buy stuff from them and like sell it elsewhere very, very cheaply, which is very, very nice. They also have plus two starport, which is like okay, but you know these guys are great if you want to basically buy and sell stuff like save it as a merchant. So these guys are a good merchant faction, and the other good merchant faction is these guys down here in Maklume, but we'll get to them when we get to them. Um, Steel Song. Uh, like these guys are like a military faction, kind of like Kader here. They basically offer like good spice and military, and here's the thing about these guys, they actually have two special rules. And this is actually something to note by the way about these guys, because if you encounter them in the void, those special rules are gonna suck for you, but you know, whatever. So first rule, basically these guys will get a discount on their like a D edict, so um basically if you, have, if you own like you know an edict, that's basically for bounty hunting. And these will basically um get you upgrades like you know at cheaper values if you basically have it. But more importantly, when you basically encounter these guys out in the void. These guys can be bribed, and that'll be a big thing in the in the game. A very big thing. Alright, so, um, we'll get the Makaluma here. These guys are, are the immersion faction. These guys are very good because they basically offer you to basically trade, like, you know, your stuff at better prices to, like, Makaluma World, so... You can basically sell, like, their stuff to, like, a Makaluma Exchange, you basically get a profit bonus for it. And they're also very good at government stuff, which is good for, like, you know, um, other stuff as well. So... Like Clan Javit, they're very, very good for, like, you know, um, trading. Now, I'm going to clip, uh, skip Clan Ultimate here and go to Clan Zen first here because these guys are like, you know, interesting faction because basically their cons live longer. And they basically have like, you know, a reduced cost for healing at their, at their clinic, so cost of healing is reduced by 20%. This is opposed to like Syndicate over here of uh, Devaltos because these guys basically like, you know, um, don't have the same like, you know, benefits as this one. But at the same time, this, this guys are a lot smaller than like Devaltos, so... Here's the thing, like, you know, um, there's like, you know, uh, um... There's a very big, like, you know, galactic map that you're just going to have stuff in, but, you know, the bigger factions are definitely, you know, ones that are, like, you know, worth, worth going to because, um, well, this guy only requires, uh, requires free um, uh, quadrants, but the bigger, like, you know, the, these guys are, the more, like, you know, influence they'll basically have over the world, and that'll basically mean, like, have a lot of safer, like, places to, like, you know, explore. If, like, you're going to, like, an enemy space, like, you know, everyone, like, say, um, as Clan Java here, all these other guys I'll have to be very careful of because if I piss them off, I won't be able to like, go into their space without, you know, their guys, like, trying to kill me a lot, and... If there's like more space of any space, that means there's going to be a lot of any space. So you know, something to watch out for. Now, although these guys here, they have like you know plus one to all the ratings, so they're basically you know very broad. They basically offer like you know reduced healing, and more importantly, their cons live for a bit longer than normal, so their cons won't die as much, which is nice. Now, what I'm going to basically play with you guys is Clan Ultimacy here, and these guys are like the shipbuilding faction. They basically have like you know the best for like you know. Um, basically upgrading their guys faster, so... The thing about this is, like, you know, um, if you have, like, upgrades for your ship, 
It'll basically be done in less time on Ultimates of World, which is very, very nice. They also have, like, you know, good starport and military rankings, so their, like, starports are, like, you know, usually going to be a lot better for Iprene as well. And they're not as, like, big as, like, the other guys, but, you know, they'll do fine, I think, for like, our purposes, so we'll select them. And then we get the difficulty. So, I'll note that there is a normal difficulty in this game, and under, under normal difficulty, basically, um, your crew base has a very low chance of dying, your officers and copy will never die, so your only way of basically dying is, like, to have like, your ship being blown up. But I really don't think much like this typically because, like, you know, um, you basically have, like, the resilience stat, and, like, the thing about resilience is that it won't actually, like, you know, be as, like, you know, worthwhile unless you're, like, you have permadeath for your captain, so we're going to go down hard, and hard, we welcome permadeath. So, um, I'm looking for, uh, for, like, you know, each of these, these, like, you know, difficulties. Something about, hurt, um, about hard is that it has to disable save slots, so you can't have saves in this game, but under hard, it's, it's, it's basically disabled. So... Yeah, that's something to watch out for. But it's only after the first 12 weeks, so if you want basically to like you know, make a captain, like you know, you, you start going like you know, like oh man, I don't like it. You, you can go back to like you know, your captain, like you know, where you basically saved it, and basically like, you know, recur, you know, it'll basically be like you know, starting a new so to speak, which is like a quick start. Um, so that's nice, and you can customize this if you want to. By the way, you can like you know, change the, change the death mode, the death save, you can um, change your challenges and stuff like that as well. Change your rewards. But I think I'll just play it hard typically because there is some, uh, you know, we'll play it hard because there is like some challenges and achievements I'm based on get and done, and then, you know, we'll get with this one. And Brutal and Impossible are something I might, might want to consider, but, you know, we'll do it in a later playthrough when I get to it. Alright, so, um, we're just going to launch here and just basically create our, ca our, our character for, like, you know, the thing. There is a quick little, like, you know, um, you know, intro, so we'll just view that, view that and we'll get there. So, launch. And here's a new game. Alright, so. One year ago, I became a Star Trek captain. Step forward, Captain Fuxa. From our family, you have been chosen to inherit your great uncle's charter. I am willing. We know you will bring Clan Ultimesa honor for your unrivaled prowess and skill. I abandoned my life as a grab and took to the stars. I am a master of my ship. I answer to no one except my officers and crew. In the void, we live by the unique code of the star traders. We make our way among the stars. We stay alive and take care of a ship no matter what. The life of a space is a hard one, but my officers have my back. And together we face the void. Orbiting pieces hold. Captain, we've reached a stable orbital trajectory, trajectory, trajectory over Fuse's hold. Should we engage the Void Engine? Let the engines rest. We need a minute for Council. Officers gather around. You all heard the message that I received at the starport today. An Ultimate Prince has requested that we transport a Zenu Arbiter to his system. He is willing to pay handsomely, it seems. Speak your minds. Captain, the woman is an arbiter. She may be one of the most dangerous people in the galaxy. But also one of the most powerful. It also means she is other than a new bloodline, like the Templars. It is rare that a star cap stereographic captain is called on to help the arbiter. This is self Arxum could be a viable ally. I've heard said that working for Zendu can be both a curse and a blessing. She claims she only needs a short lift uh, across the quadrant. The pay will be good. There is much to consider. Your thoughts are appreciated. Dismissed. Arbor Estelle Broxton is waiting for us at Slayer, uh, Slayer City and needs passage to the court of Prince Calgan Fane. Both she and the prince could be powerful allies. However, if we wish to avoid entanglements, we could go our own way. A waypoint for Slayer City has already been set. And I can check my missions list for further details or dismiss the request. Alright, now no point is a quick tutorial, so let's go through it and then like you know we'll basically call quits for the first episode, but here we go. Whenever you need advice or help with a screen, open the links menu and then choose the consult with your officer. So you can do that here and push like you know uh, um consult right there. And I just skipped the tutorial by accident, but oh well. Um that's fine. So I'll know by like you know there's like you know a lot of help you can basically get in this game. I don't really need it, so we won't worry about it too much, but you know, whatever. 
Um, you know what? That's basically like the intro to this game. And, you know, this is probably a good stopping point, so let's just save it here. And, oh, but you can actually save it, like, early on, so if you want to, like, you know, go to save slots, boom. And there's, like, you know, us at turn zero. We only do that for, like, a little bit, though. After, like, a turn 120, we can't do that anymore. You'll see, like, this button get grayed out, but that'll be then. This is now. But this is, like, the first episode done. We just got the character creation out of the way. And I'll jump into, like, the, like, you know, the run proper, so to speak, right after we, you know, get to the next episode. So, for now, take care.